Hi! So, here is the latest iteration of the um, Cube Octagon wind generator. We'll have a closer look at it in a minute. But this started as a mathematical model, and then it became like a prop from Star Trek. Then it was sort of like a Star Wars drone, and to be honest, I think we're staying with the Star Wars theme. To me, this looks like a TIE fighter. I mean, I, I think it looks awesome, to be honest. I really love it. Now, of course, I want to demonstrate what's, uh, how it works, and actually it works surprisingly well. But we're having a flat, calm day. The last time we had a flat, calm day, of course, I used a hairdryer, and I got no end of complaints. So I thought I'd use a fan. But the only fan I've got is this weedy little thing. <laughs> I might as well be fanning it by hand. But we're going to give it a go and see if we can actually get this thing spinning using this ridiculous little fan. Because if this fan will do it, then a, a wind is going to do it, okay? Then we'll have a look and see what we can get from the uh, meter reading just by turning on the fan. So let's give that a go. I mean, it's ridiculous that this fan is moving this at all, to be honest. I know, it's all a bit rough and ready, but it's giving me confidence that this thing's actually going to work. Let's have a look at some of the volts, because we've had a quick look at the um, amps. Let's have a look at the volts and see what we get in terms of voltage. Now, I've not checked the voltage, so I'll check it when I play the video back, but I'm pretty sure that we're getting a voltage reading there. And if we short circuit that bad boy. There we go, it's slowing down again, but it's still, even under short circuit, it's actually managing to spin. So, to my mind, actually, that's fairly impressive. So, if the wind picks up, I'm definitely going to be taking this outside. Now let's have a closer look how it's actually made. Okay, so it comes apart really quite easily actually. That comes off. That comes off. That comes out. And then the rest stays as it is. So you can see pretty much how it's made. I mean, that's a kitchen bowl. Okay, I drilled a hole in the kitchen bowl and fastened it down. Now, I did get a piece of aluminium and cut this hexagonal shape out of it. That's the size of the kitchen bowl, so the kitchen bowl actually goes there. Then I drilled a few holes in it to make it look pretty. These bits are bent three up and three down by 30 degrees to make the retainer for the actual cage. This is what I've got, okay? It's a motor on a stick. It's a stepper motor, obviously. Uh, and um, that's about the biggest I've got on this, actually. So that's actually what's driving it. Now, I did think that I would um, upgrade that uh, and when I get a chance, because actually I think it's working really well, then I probably will upgrade it. So everything has been bolted onto this hex sheet. This hex sheet with the bend in it and the bowl actually gets quite stiff. So when we look at that, you can see the kitchen bowl, it's right there bolted onto the hex sheet, there's the bend, there's the cage, and I made a flange there for, to take the stepper motor. These are little angles to hold the bowl in place, and that's all there is to it, really. Okay, so that is the finished design. I, I do love this, actually. I think it's particularly cool. Like I say, it reminds me of a Star Wars TIE fighter. Now, it is weather tight, and uh, it does generate a reasonable amount, actually. So, when we get some wind, I will take that outside and give that a go outside and see what we actually get. But this is the final version. There won't be any more developments, I don't think, on the uh, actual design of it. I think I'm going to stick with this. I like the sphere in the centre. I think that's helped a lot with the wind movement once it goes in here. I'm not sure about closing these up. I quite like those as a, a wind exit for anything that might get trapped along with the top and the bottom. I think it's fine the way it is, so I'm not going to be changing the design of that anytime soon. But of course, if you want to change the design, then feel free. I mean, that's what it's all about, really. It's all about playing with this stuff and, and seeing what you can come up with. 
Now we started, like I say, with this as a mathematical model. We ran it, we played with it, we took up suggestions, we have discussed it a bit in the comments, and that's the design that's come out of it. Now, in terms of efficiency, I'm not sure how efficient that's going to be, but it really is made out of a bit of aluminium and two kitchen bowls and an old Venetian blind. So if you measure efficiency as the cost per kilowatt hour for what you've paid for it and how much it generates, I imagine it's stupidly efficient, to be honest. I like its unobtrusive nature. I like the fact you could pretty much put that anywhere. This was super easy to make. And like I say, bending that aluminium there to form the 30 degree angle stiffens the aluminium because everything hangs off of this aluminium plate. This aluminium plate has a little sort of piece of aluminium in here that is a hub and that takes all of the forces so everything's a fact attached to this plate this plate attaches to the hub so this plate is the main structural element of it it's one of the reasons the venetian blinds work and because they aren't particularly strong in themselves but they aren't actually doing that much in the way of support structure all they have to do is support themselves and transfer that energy from the wind into this plate and to do that, they have this big footprint here, so the forces are spread quite a long way. So them in themselves, they're rigid enough. I might back them up a little bit with something on the top. If we wanted to, we could put stairs from the top triangle into the sphere in, in the centre. We wanted to do that, stiffen that a little bit. But I think I'm going to play with it a bit in some winds and see what happens. If it does fly apart, then obviously we're going to need to think about some kind of stiffening, like I say, stays or a top ring or something like that. But by itself at the moment, it actually looks like it has sufficient strength, certainly for mild winds, but we'll have to see. But that won't change the design per se. The look of it is just going to change some of the structural features of it. Anyway, that's been uh, quite an interesting journey for me in wind generation. I hope you've enjoyed the series. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. And thank you very much for watching.